What's going on guys? Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to show you how to grill chicken breast without drying them out. What you got in front of you here are uh, some chicken breast. Most of these, when you buy them at the market, are gonna be pretty thick. The first step you wanna do here is you want to just kinda slice and butterfly them. All right. What you're trying to do here is you're trying to keep the same thickness across all your ch pieces of chicken breast so that they all come out around the same time. So the next step here is you wanna get about four cups of water and about a fourth cup of kosher salt. This is the key right here. In order for your chicken not to dry out, you need to brine it for a little bit. The first step here would be to do this part. What you can do at this point is you could put your chicken in here, but I have one of these gallon sized bags. It's just gonna make it a lot easier. I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, throw my chicken pieces in here. So the last step here as far as a brining is concerned, you just want to toss your solution in here. Close it up. Oops. And there you go. You have your, your chicken in that kosher salt and water solution. What you want to do here after this is put it in the refrigerator and uh, let it sit for about 30 minutes. So depending on your barbecue pit, this should take anywhere between 20 to about 30 to 40 minutes. So it's been about 30 to 40 minutes since I put this chicken in this brine. The next thing you want to do here is you want to get some paper towels and we're going to go ahead and take them out of the brine. Try to dry them up as much as possible. Get rid of this. I like to add a little bit of this extra virgin olive oil as a coating just to get them nice and slick. Once I do that, add your favorite rub. I just so happen to have some of this seasoning that I'm going to use here, so I'm going to go ahead and just season it. This is just giving them a nice little coating. Uh, after you put them in the grill, you can give them a little bit more of a better coating, which I think I'm gonna end up doing after this anyways. So now that you got your grill nice and warm here, you wanna get it about 300 degrees more or less. You wanna get yourself an onion. If you have one of these, these are pretty cool. A lot of the products that I have here, I'll have a, a link on the description below. What you do here is you just kinda stab this in there and give your grill a nice little cleaning. What I have in here is asparagus. Asparagus with some salt and uh, a bushel, I guess you would call it a bushel of asparagus with some salt and some butter. This one you just kind of put it there and let it let it ride for the, for the entire cook so it can soften up. So I like to use canola oil to make it not as sticky. Now because we did cut these in half, made them into little fillets, I guess you would call them, uh, they, won't, they will not take that much time. It drastically reduces the cooking time, all right? If you want to add a little bit more of this of your seasoning here at this point Perfect time to do it The whole point is try not to uh, I guess dry them out by overcooking them uh, you, What you would want to do also here is get yourself a uh, temperature probe, which I'm gonna take out right now So this is one of the reasons I say that you need to try to get it as uh, close to the thickness as possible all the way around you can tell right here that this piece of the chicken is very thin compared to these so it's already starting to turn white here 
Um, you're gonna have some of that because you're not gonna have every piece of chicken the same thickness. Just try to keep an eye on that. You might wanna pull this one out a little bit sooner than the others. So what you wanna do uh, here as well is you wanna get yourself a, a good uh, temperature probe. I got one of these from Thermalworks. Uh, this one's, they have real good products there. I do have a link on the description below. I am an affiliate with them. So check them out if you have a chance, if you're looking for something that is real reliable. Okay, so what I'm gonna do right now is I'm starting to see a good discoloration on the edges on, on most of the pieces. The next thing here to do is just to kind of flip them. So and we're gonna be looking for a temperature of uh, 165 internal temp. So you can tell this is a, a, a hotter part. This one, oh, this one's ready. So we're at 166 more or less. And don't worry about sticking these out. Look at the juices coming out of there. Don't worry about sticking these out and then you, you're supposed to let it cool for about five minutes before you even cut into it. That way all the juices don't just wanna come out. 